I like to talk more about the SOB line because oh, I've yeah. been with you guys as your ambassador for for five years now, and I've right. launched all your displays, and I've seen the improvement throughout the years. And I think the the latest one that I've been testing, the three two one C, it's really fantastic. It has a new coating, which yes. is fantastic. It has a uh, the new color mode called Paper Color Sync, which yes. is designed to match print, and I've been testing those, and I have a lot of reviews of those out online, already, so make sure you do check those out. But how are you? Are you involved in creating that screen too? And what do you, what you know? Just tell me more about it. Like, okay. You know, the, you know actually, there is a lot to talk about this uh, brand new model, SW three two one C. Let's go okay. into it. Okay. Okay. Because from Day one, that which is about two years ago, okay, we started this development from the panel, from ground up, okay, from ground zero, because we realized there is a problem with the panel itself, because no matter what kind of matte finish we have, we still can see the reflection from mm -hmm. the light in the office. Yes. Right? You see the bars. Yeah, you, you do. You see a round shape lighting around it yes. on your screen, right? Yes. Which is annoying. Yeah. And which is not good for your eyes. Mm -hmm. Right? So we see we try to get rid of that um, reflection. Okay. So we get the idea from what? On the paper. Mm -hmm. Because when you hold a piece of paper in your office, you don't get that kind of reflection at all. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Even though you have a very strong uh, office lighting, right? That's true. So that's why we get an idea. Why paper don't have that reflection, but our screen have it. So that's why we get it from the paper. They can re it can refuse the diffuse the light very evenly. Okay, so this is why we design our coating. We try to diffuse our lighting very very evenly. So that's why we have to start from the panel structure. Wow. So that's why we have to work with our panel manufacturer from mm -hmm. the very very foundation. Okay, start from the structure of coating everything from ground up so that takes us two years to develop this whole new panel wow so that takes a long time and yeah. uh, i was proud of it because i was involved from day one gotcha yeah and took a very long time to develop it probably and a lot of effort and sweat goes into oh yeah and experience. a lot of negotiation a yes. lot of communication and lots of like r d work and yeah. going back and forth so that's why um, the finish is very different. So even though, like you shine like a flash out on it, you don't see lots of reflection on that. Right, so right. it's really good for um, daily use. I would say not only in um, I would say soft proofing scenario, but also very good for daily use. Yeah, because it's really good for your eyes. It's, it's true. Um, so if you haven't seen my review yet, you should definitely go look up my review. I'll put the link in the description uh, of this video, and you can see the reflection. It's it's literally diffusing the light that's actually hitting the panel, and all the BenQ displays that the Pro Display line that they sell are all matte displays anyway however this SW321C it takes it to a new level and it's right now my understanding is is BenQ exclusive because I haven't seen any other display like that and I'm really proud to be their ambassador because of this reason well there's many things but this is one of the main ones right mm -hmm. now because I get a chance to test it and play with it it was it's just really fantastic you have to see it in person the funny thing too is that on the trade show floor we have people coming up to us and they are asking us is this a picture on a screen or do you put a cardboard or yeah. a printed paper out <laughs> it's like this is an actual picture so we have to switch the picture to show them dynamically that you are still seeing the computer interface that's how great it is so it's you know something to keep in mind there uh, paper color sync let's go oh, yeah. that a little bit more because okay. um, that's that's a really interesting question and, and, and just topic to talk about in general because I think that you guys are doing a really great job with right. matching the colors coming out from you know two printers are a supporter right yes. now uh, with the testing and everything it's it's been great but tell us more yeah. about that technology behind paper color sync okay this is um, paper color sync is we try to develop um, something user-friendly mm -hmm. to try to match the print from our monitors. Because, like I said, the technology we develop, develop for this coating is try to simulate the paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ideally this um, look should be really um, simulate the print very easily. But people, um, the users, 
are not really familiar how to really uh, using Photoshop to do mm -hmm. soft proofing this right. um, whole process. They're not very familiar with that. So paper color sync technology is trying to uh, be user friendly in this aspect. So that's why we choose. Um, you, you just need to choose what kind of light source you're under at, mm -hmm. okay, and what kind of printer you're using, what kind of paper you're printed on. Mm -hmm. Just select these parameters and just um, hit the button config, config, and then um, it just automatically load all the data into the monitor itself. Yeah. It takes about like for the thirty seconds, yeah, probably just do it, about, yes. about that, and then uh, you get a whole new um, appearance on the monitors and it will match the print you have from your printer. Gotcha. So you get a really good uh, simulated re um, results. Cool. Yeah. So some of our users have been asking the support for the paper color sync right now is really limited to two printers and for each of those printers just two different papers. Yeah. Is there, and without telling us too much, is there right. any plan to expand on the paper ranges and possibly printers in the future? Yes, we're working really hard on that. It just, um, because developing this kind of technology takes a lot of effort on our side yes. to do that. Yeah, so uh, this is, we're doing our best to expand uh, paper range and uh, also printer range as well, right. yes. Really cool. Yeah. But I mean, just something to keep in mind too is from my testing, I've tested unsupported paper on the Epson printer, paper from Canstone Infinity, and it, you know, based on the ink that set that they use, either matte or photo black, you know, paper color scene can simulate really close to that too. And it comes even closer when you do soft proofing in Photoshop using the paper profile or in Lightroom using said paper profile. So it's been really an amazing experience being able to see exactly how your print's coming out. And that's just been something that I've, you know, I've always been able to match it, but this comes, bring it even closer to what it is. So I know the BenQ SWU line display that are made for photographer with hardware calibration and their designer line, the PD line, are really great displays, but BenQ have also gone out further and they are the first display manufacturer to go out to Pantone and get their display Pantone validated. So yes. tell us more about that because I think it's really great that you guys are the first to do it. Right. Actually, uh, we've been crying out loud for this Pantone validated certification nice. scheme. Yes, because we understand that um, designers they're really familiar with Pantone. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Um, so that's why um, we want to speak with their language, and then we ask Pantone to kind of have this certification. And um, for many many years, actually, it started from back in 2015. Mm -hmm. Back that was back then. That wow. was their first contact, and. Um, they design and go, went back and design designed the schema. So yeah, so I think um, 2018 we got some progress. Right. And then 2019 that was the first um, models that we got first certified. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. So we are the first brand to be certified. Well, it's actually really good to know too that yeah. you're not the first, only just the first brand who actually got certified. Yeah. You're actually the first brand who actually pushed them to create yes. the certification program. Yeah. Uh, this is something you'll never ever hear about <laughs> in outside conversations. So you just, because you'll just see the sticker or, you know, in the marketing material saying is Pantone uh, validated, but this is really great information here. Yeah. So. so this also reflect that we understand what our customer needs. Yes. Right. So. Is, uh, we listened to our customers, and our customer told us that, well, if Pantone do something, well, they understand, if there's something Pantone mm -hmm. on the sticker, right, right, then we will know the value of these monitors. Right. So that's what we listen to. Really cool. Yeah. So I, I just want to add something here too that uh, if you're wondering what Pantone is, Pantone is literally a library of, I would probably say like a really large library of colors and they have very specific color with very specific hue and you can buy those paints literally for that specific color. It's not mixed or anything like that, it's paint manufactured with that specific color code. So it's really awesome and if you ever get, see a Pantone booklet, there's like millions of colors in there. It's just crazy and the tonal variation is uh, very slight between them but if you are a designer if you are designing a specific product your client is going to want exact that exact Pantone color and being able to have a display that can show true Pantone color that's going to be really amazing and that's what BenQ have done here in this case is create a display that is certifiable that can reproduce those unique Pantone colors. Uh, one of the last thing I want to touch on here 
is we talked about we talked a lot about reference color right. when we do the calibration we're calibrating your reference color we're doing all these things to reference color uh, let's talk to our viewers a little bit here and let's tell them what reference color is for those that are unfamiliar what reference reference color is because I, I know what it is but I like you I like you guys to hear it from Chris himself because he knows way more about colors than I do all right I'll try to explain it in a more simplified way uh, yes. so reference color is it has to be a certain um, conditions mm -hmm. okay it has to be at certain color temperature, which means white point at certain white. For mm -hmm. example, like we said, D65, mm -hmm. right? At uh, 6,500 uh, um, Kelvin, at um, a certain um, brightness level, mm -hmm. okay? at a certain gamma curve, okay? And display um, some color patches we measured, okay? So this has to be um, our fixed condition. So we measured the color and then uh, we get some color uh, values out there and we compare with the um, a set of, um, we said, XYZ values out there. Okay, we compare the differences and we compute the difference. Is it, if it's within the uh, color difference value we accept it, then we say it's a pass. Yes. So those are generally the delta E and yeah, in, yes, in us, e. for us layman terms. Yes, right? yes. yes. Okay. yes. Uh, you mentioned something about XYZ and yes. all the color standard generally comes from this one organization called Commission Internationale de Eclairac, CIE or Commission on Luminance. They started in France in the early 1930s. It's really amazing and CIE XYZ is one of the oldest color space out there. That's when these group of people come together and decide to define the color space. From that point on, there are many color spaces that they introduce for different applications and so forth. As photographers, one of the things that we may be used to is uh, CIE Lab. That would be one of the color space that we use. But CIE XYZ, like I said, is one of the really large older color space. And like I said, Lab is also a really large one, but it's been modernized. And for our displays, there are different other color technologies that is using the CIE standard for that. So um, anything else you'd like to add to my comment about CIE or... No, that not sounds really. about right. That sounds about right, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice job. Thank you. So yeah, Commission on Color, really awesome stuff. But anyway, uh, Chris, yeah. glad to have some time with you on camera. I've been oh, talking yeah. off camera and just geeking out about color with you all the time. I'm glad so, to do that. You yeah, know. this has been fun. And thank you yes. so much for lending us your time from, no, you know, no just problem. coming out here and yeah. for BenQ giving us, you know, giving you to us for, for me to interview you. It's always good to see you and nice to talk to you anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.